think, oh, everyone else is making money and I don't want to miss out. So it's the fear of missing out, mm -hmm. uh, which I think drives that. Uh, but it's also boredom too. People, you know, you're trading to get a rush. You're trading for a thrill. Um, you're, you know, when you should be surgical and methodical about it. Um, you know, like if, if, you, if you're an early adopter to Bitcoin and you believed in it, uh, then your idea was to hold it and just hold it all the way and maybe kind of, um, uh, you know, sell a little bit here and there, maybe on like major market tops. But you should never, you know, over trading is the enemy because you're, you're going to get, you're going to pay fees. Uh, you're going to second guess yourself. It's, it's, just, it's just a lot more dangerous and it's a lot, it's really easy to lose your money. So the good traders can do it. The really, really good traders are able to accumulate more uh, by trading, maybe using a weekly chart or whatever they're doing. But like, it's just, a, it's easy for everyone else to, to get chopped up in the volatility, uh, have their stop losses triggered. And because the market makers know what you're doing when you're trading, they know where your stop losses are. They know where the major support and resistance levels are and they maybe they, they kind of understand what you're trying to do and they're going to they're going to trade against you so uh it's just a, it's just really hard man <laughs> it's just yeah really i mean hard. exactly and that's that's what as a market maker that's what we used to do by career we would know that there everyone's following these charts yeah um, certain people would have stop losses here because the book tells you to yeah and so all we need to do is find something that was mentioned in investors chronicle or the financial times know yeah. that there's a bunch of retail that are going to jump in mm. um push the price um in the you know in to create some kind of momentum yes the trader would then have fomo they try and jump in. Yes. At that point, we have um, Goldman Sachs on the line that's been trying to um, offload their position, mm. and they're they're using you know the the the, the knowledge that there's going to be a bunch of retail um, to mm. offload some of that institutional at that stage. Um, yeah. And then you can you can always push the prices down to where the stop losses are if you want to uh, get people out. And and you just the market makers just you know up and down um, and and moving these different price levels that that, that we know that there's going to be significant orders at. Yeah, it's it's, the, it's really easy retail kind of, um, I can imagine it might be easy to understand what retail is doing based on social media, they're following the news. Um, I often say like, you know, someone has to buy the top. You know, if you're gonna have a blow off top, if you're gonna have that big move either over shoulder over dip, you know, you're gonna have to have retail capitulate before a big run and you're gonna have to have retail buy the top maybe for a big pullback. It's just, you have, someone has to buy the top. Um, so sometimes that's natural, but often um, I can see it being manufactured kind of like what you talked about there. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I've always noticed is that um, the insiders are always making money at the expense of outsiders. Yeah. Um, in the long term, this doesn't really matter. I mean, some could argue that, you know, that the gold markets are big time manipulators at yeah. the sovereign wealth level and uh, central bank level uh, because China's trying to accumulate a lot of gold, these long term mm -hmm. fundamental things. But um, what I've seen in, in traditional markets is the, the vast amount of manipulation that happens. Now, manipulation is an interesting word because uh, it's right. at the end of the day. Um, but what about Bitcoin? Um, you yeah. see these ginormous orders that suddenly everyone's chasing on the blockchain, it's moved over to Bitfinex, or yeah. a bunch of 25,000 Bitcoin has moved over to yeah. uh, Bitfinex, and then suddenly, or 50 Bitcoin from the early, uh, the really early addresses in 2009 yes. moves over. Yes. Um, you know, what, what do you see here? Is this, is this pure manipulation? Is there a group of insiders that are just playing these, these, uh, you know, these reactions that people are going to have? Yeah, I think you have a market right now, which is headline sensitive. Um, and I think people, generally speaking, like the retail broader market, they want to know if they're looking for a clean signal. You know, they want to know what's a clean signal. So like a big, a big amount of tether that moved, you know, maybe they think we'll pump it or if like, you know, maybe some Bitcoin from the old wallet unlocked, I think it's going to be dumped. They want to know, they're just looking for a nice, clean, simple signal. You know, anytime I put out a chart and it's a little bit ambiguous because uh, I'm just kind of scoping it and I'm giving some levels to watch people reply on Twitter and people reply, they say, you know, long or short, you know, up or down. They just want to know. Um, so people are looking for nice, clean answers. And I think that's why there's the appeal for them, kind of the, the mass market, the psychology of the market to, to react to these single events like a tweet or just a single move um, and you also have the fact since you do have the blockchain nothing's hidden so that's just it's just different where you can see you can see every transaction so people are trying to read the tea leaves as much you know as much as possible so they're over interpreting as well uh, so in that type of environment it's, it's easy to mislead it's easy to kind of uh, fool people and trick people yeah well i mean the, the manipulation in the bitcoin markets is if you know just as great as all the other markets if not greater because it's a yeah. it's a lower liquidity and yes you know, on the short term time frame you know you, you're gonna there's there's a lot of insider stuff going on um, mm. that, that you're gonna have to deal with with these uh with these things um what about so tell help, help people understand what's the difference between this um technical analysis and fundamental analysis so um 